episode eight of the Maverick Mastery. This episode will be the FIB paragraph, the new question variant, that has come up in the last two cycles. It's such a new question variant that there is very little this material available. And there is very, very little theory available as well in order to do well in this section or this question type. So I will try my hand at it, try my best. And that's it. Uh, there is a sentence given, then there's a paragraph with four blank blanks mark, and you have to identify where the given sentence can potentially fit. Now, my approach to solving this, my way of going about doing such questions is I read the paragraph, I read the paragraph, and then look for clues where a new sentence introduction would make the paragraph richer. When I say richer, I mean the argumentation would be better or the statements that are spoken would be nicer that way. So before reading the sentence, I read the paragraph. Once I've read the paragraph, then I go back and look at the sentence and then see if there are any clues that I can work on. First question, safe water, adequate sanitation and hygiene are cardinal prerequisites for protection of health. Childhood diarrhea can be prevented by access to safe water and sanitation along with the advancement of good hygiene practices, particularly hand washing with soap. Now see here, for one, what I see, the switch over seems a little odd. First, we had protection of health, general protection of health, and then we have moved on to a very specific disease, childhood diarrhea. So this point I keep in mind, I keep on reading. Childhood diarrhea can be prevented by access to safe water, uh, with sanitation, along with advancement of good hygiene practices, particularly hand washing with soap. The primary causes of diarrhea deaths today are unsafe water, inadequate sanitation, and poor hygiene. Doesn't seem like two needs something extra. We had talked of childhood diarrhea, and we have moved on to primary causes of diarrhea deaths today. It can be prevented by this, and it is if the cause for diarrhea, reasons are given. So something coming in too would not add a lot of value. We want primary causes of diarrhea deaths today are unsafe water, inadequate sanitation, and poor hygiene. There is a link. Then there are also links between poor sanitation and acute respiratory infections. Now we have moved on from one disease, diarrhea, to acute respiratory infections. And there is also this beautiful word. There are also links, also links, which means uh, basically, poor sanitation and acute respiratory infections, one of these two can potentially get highlighted in three, can potentially get highlighted in, you'll see. Next, uh, food intake, general health status and physical environment determine levels of nutrition and malnutrition. Okay, so the switch over from here to here also seems odd. We've got respiratory infections being talked of, and then general advice. The first statement was general advice. The last statement is general advice. And then second statement is about childhood diarrhea. The next statement is causes of diarrhea. Then there is an idea of poor sanitation, acute respiratory infections. Then general advice. Or Even the switch over here seems weird. Now that we have read through this paragraph and identified what areas potentially statements can come in in order to make this paragraph richer, let us go to the state sentence given. 5,000 children die every day due to infectious diarrhea caused principally by inadequate sanitation. So now I know this cannot be the spot where this is coming. It cannot be this spot where it is coming because we are still talking of diarrhea. Prior to this, we had already moved on to respiratory infections and then general advice is given. Infectious diarrhea caused by inadequate sanitation. It would not make sense to introduce talk of diarrhea again. You've talked of diarrhea, you moved on to a new type of disease, then you go back to diarrhea. That order of sequencing does not make sense. So four is not the blank where this should be coming. The options remain one and three. Now, I see... This sentence has a se segment called caused principally by inadequate sanitation. And after three, I have, there are also links between poor sanitation. There are also links between poor sanitation. And here we are talking of inadequate sanitation. 
sanitation as the hero of the story. Remember, three could have three could have been filled up by extra information about sanitation or acute respiratory infections. We have this sentence that is talking of inadequate sanitation, which is fine. Now, let's see if it will make sense in one. 5,000 children die every day due to infectious diarrhea caused principally by inadequate sanitation. Safe water, adequate sanitation and hygiene are cardinal prerequisites for protection of health. Blank one, childhood diarrhea can be prevented by access to safe water, blah, blah, blah. Primary causes for diarrhea deaths today are unsafe water, inadequate sanitation and poor health. Okay. Now see, in my head, I cannot possibly argue against one. I cannot possibly argue against one. If Even if it came in one, it would be fine because children dying due to diarrhea and then childhood diarrhea has been mentioned. The switch over or the change over makes reasonable sense. But now I am not choosing uh, which is sensible and choosing which is less objectionable, which is more likely. Between the two of them, three seems more likely. Between the two of them, three seems more likely on account of the fact that there are also links between poor sanitation and inadequate sanitation was the principal cause of infectious diarrhea mentioned earlier. Okay. So, childhood diarrhea. Oh, there is also a wonderful idea why this is uh, wonderful. See, prior to statement 3, we have got this primary causes of diarrhea deaths. The idea of deaths has been introduced. Then in this sentence, we have children dying. So, death, die, link, also link. So, three seems like the most correct response here. Answer should be option three. Next question. There is a okay, sent, uh, paragraph. Again, we'll start off by simply marking the paragraph. Blank. The recent media coverage of Dalit singers from Punjab has understandably elicited much attention and interest. So, Dalit singers from Punjab have been given attention in the recent times. Blank. While Punjab has always been known for peppy music and boisterous socio-cultural life, the rise and prominence of Dalit singers harks to the state's caste conundrum in its wake. Absolutely wonderful. It doesn't seem like we need to be adding anything to one. It, it seems like a normal flow. Normal flow. One will not be the spot where something gets added. While Punjab has always been known for its peppy music and boisterous social culture, like the rise and prominence of Dalit singers, arts to the states or calls attention to the states, caste conundrum in its way. Right? Celebratory occasions in Punjab have hitherto seen the predominance of a particular kind of music, locally known as Jut pop music. Okay? Jut pop music, highlighting and valorizing the Jut culture and its hues. Okay? Absolutely wonderful. Again, two doesn't seem like a spot where anything needs to be introduced because in the previous sentence, you were talking of peppy music, boisterous social cultural life. Next line is celebratory occasions in Punjab. So, seems very, very normal and natural. The second line makes sense. One and two cannot be the spots where something new is introduced. Three and four then. Okay. Celebratory occasions in Punjab have hitherto seen the predominance of a particular type of music, locally known as Jat Pop music. Here, there is also a clue. Jat Pop must have been introduced here because it is within quotations. If it was not within quotations, it must have been referenced earlier. The fact that it is being presented within quotations, this is the first time it has been uh, it has been mentioned. And then definition of this is also given, or at least the attributes of this is given. This highlights and valorizes the Jat culture and its heroes. Okay. The Jat Sikhs own roughly about more than 80% of the state land. We had talked of Jat culture. Then we have gone on to Jat Sikhs. Okay. But then the switch over to land ownership, highlighting and valorizing the Jat culture and moving over to land ownership seems weird. So, this spot potentially can have a new sentence added. Hence, the emergence and popularity of, say, Ginni Mahi, a 17-year-old singing sensation, hailing from the lower caste Jatav community in Punjab, signifies a larger trend and a reconfiguration of the socio-political milieu of Punjab. 
Okay. See this statement. The statement between blank three and blank four is a very data driven statement. Jut six own about more than eighty percent of the state's land. The very data driven statement. From a data driven statement, if you come up with an opinion based insight, hence the emergence and popularity of say Ginni Mahi is uh, signifies a larger trend and a reconfiguration of socio political milieu of Punjab. From a data driven statement, if you are getting to an opinion based conclusion, there has to be a link somewhere. There has to be a link somewhere. The switch over seems weird. So perhaps blank four can also have blank four can also have some, something added to make this paragraph rich. Now we go to the statement. This was expected given the almost absolute monopoly of Jat Six, uh, an upper caste of Punjab over both religious and temporal matters, most crucially land ownership. Okay. Now see we have there is a mention of most crucially land ownership so if it comes in three the next statement is about states land that is wonderful we also have mention of jut 6 which is present here that is also wonderful okay yeah. Uh, predominance of a particular kind of music locally known as jat pop music. It has to be three or four. One or two does not make sense because jat pop, uh, only after the introduction of jat pop can you have this sentence of jat six coming. The link again between three and four, it is at either place if you introduce it. See, we have the in the sentence we have this was expected. So what was expected? The expectation was uh, the fact that the dominance of a particular kind of music is taking place in Punjab, or this was expected that more than 80% of state's land is owned by Jat 6. Both of these can be expected. Given the almost absolute monopoly of Jat 6, an upper caste of Punjab over both religious and temporal matters. See, wonderful thing. If we are looking at upper caste of Punjab, they have dominance over religious and temporal matters. Would this most likely lead to land ownership, property ownership, or would this most likely lead to uh, jut pop music highlighting and valorizing the jut culture and beliefs? It could be either, but it would fit better in four. It would fit better in four. Additionally, the fact that Jat 6 have been introduced as an upper caste here, upper caste of Punjab, and Ginni Mahi was mentioned as hailing from a lower caste. The gap between these two ideas cannot possibly exist. Therefore, 4 seems like the better spot where this idea should come in. If I had to argue against it, I would say I've already been told 80% of state's land was owned by Jat 6. So again, Going on to the idea of most crucial land ownership seems like a repetition, but the fact that 80% of land ownership lay with uh, Jet 6 and upper caste of Punjab over both, and they had absolute, almost absolute monopoly over both religious and temporal matters, most crucially land ownership makes absolute sense. So, four would be my preferred choice here. Answer should be four. Okay, next. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. I am not sure if the actions of believers of the religious sort, regardless of whether they want to insist on Jesus being the son of God, on the Quran being the word of Allah, or on Ganesha being the product of Vedic plastic surgery, have actually had an equal reaction, but they definitely have had an opposite, if vastly unequal reaction. Okay. Now see the switch over here. Every action is an equal and opposite reaction. This is Newton's third law of motion. Not the entire law. This is partial law, but this is the popular version. Uh, Newton's third law of motion. And then, I'm not sure if the actions of the believers of the religious sort, regardless of whether they want to insist on Jesus being the God, blah, 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 have had an equal reaction. So, 
it doesn't seem likely that one will have anything included because opposite reaction followed by equal reaction. Similar idea is being continued. So one getting filled up does not really make sense. Okay. Then we have been told, uh, told that uh, followers of different religion have had opposite reaction. They have been unforgiving or unkind towards uh, people who don't believe in their God or let's say actions of believers regardless of whether they want to have had an equal reaction but they definitely have had an opposite if vastly unequal reaction. The degree of their opposition may be different but all of them are in opposition. That is the idea being transferred. The new atheists Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens et al. among others are more or less what this unequal but opposite reaction boils down to. You can see if vastly unequal reaction, then this statement about what this unequal but opposite reaction boils down. If I introduce a statement in between, which is not unequal and opposite reaction related, then the switch over will become bad. So not a great point to introduce a new sentence. Obviously, doubters can never match the vehemence of believers. The doubters referenced here would be the atheists. Atheism is uh, the belief that God does not exist. So doubters are the atheists that are being referenced. And hence, it would be a folly to expect atheists to match the actions of staunch believers of God, historically and also concurrently. If you go back and look at the historical record of how vehemently believers in God have reacted to something and atheists have reacted to something, the disparity in degree of reaction would be very evident. And not only in history, historical perspective, even right now, even as the time passes, the atheists are not reacting as vehemently as believers. Uh, and hence, it would be a folly to expect atheists to match the actions of staunch believers in God historically and also concurrently. In places like, and concurrently, in places like Saudi Arabia and Iran, which do not seem to agree on anything except the gory fate of doubters. Saudi Arabia, Iran are Islamic countries and they may not agree, their political affiliations, their political actions may not necessarily align except on the fact that they agree on one idea that non-believers the kafirs will have a gory fate. Gory is bloody fate or they will face damage which may or may not include death. Okay. Then we have this wonderful version where you have a 4 here. This 4 can never be ruled out. This 4 can never ever be ruled out because it is right at the end. You remove, you rule out stuff when you see the linkages are fine. When four is right at the end, you cannot rule it out. Or if one is right at the beginning, you cannot rule it out right away. So we'll see. So the two spots that are left for consideration. See, three, it doesn't seem like three will have something included. Because uh, unequal but opposite reaction boils down to, was in reference to atheists. The next line was about atheists only, doubters can never match the vehemence of believers. So let's see what the statement is. After all, what do staunch believers have to lose but their heads when the only thing an atheist has to lose is his or her head? A wonderful play on words and this sort of confirms option four. This confirms option four. What the statement means is, after all, what do staunch believers have to lose but their heads? The worst they can do is lose their minds, lose, get angry, go berserk. But an atheist, if they if they anger these staunch believers, they can die. They will have a gory fate. They lose their head. This is quite literal meaning. So gory fate, losing their head, links up perfectly. The answer here has to has to be option four. Okay. Next question then. Despite the Union Carbide Corporation being criminally liable for Bhopal catastrophe, the government, though being the sole representative of the victims, colluded with the UCC and compromised the interests of the affected people. Okay. The government, 
despite uh, supposedly working on behalf of the citizens, actually uh, got into a secret agreement with uh, Union Carbide Corporation and acted against the interest of the people that it was supposed to represent. Moreover, then there is a blank. Moreover, even within the reinstitution of the criminal liability, the UCC accused have been allowed to evade prosecution. Uh, there was talk of collusion between the government that was supposed to represent the public and Union Carbide officials, how they have colluded. And the second statement is also an extension of the same idea. Moreover, even with the reinstitution of criminal liability, which would imply there was a period, there was a period uh, when the criminal liability, when the criminal liability was removed or the criminal liability was no longer being enforced upon Union Carbide Corporation. So when you have re-institution, re-establishment of criminal liability, the UCC accused have been allowed to evade prosecution. Evading prosecution is they are not facing trials. They are not facing the consequences of their actions. Okay. The trial court in Bhopal had no option but to hand down a sentence, to hand down a sentence, equivalent to what is given for causing death by negligence in a traffic accident. Okay. They are able to evade prosecution. The trial court in Nepal had no option but to hand down a sentence equivalent to what was given for causing death by negligence in a traffic accident. A traffic accident is a very, very sad outcome. People lose their lives, near and dear ones go away. Yes, absolutely. But what Union Carbide did versus what a traffic accident is, the scale of destruction caused by Union Carbide was insanely larger. And to compare the two tragedies, say what, what is being compared is, let's say I get into a fight with somebody, I pick up a gun and shoot that person. And uh, somebody plots and plans and in Delhi Metro, there, there is a lot of uh, crowd. There they throw a bomb. If both of us are tried at an equal level, if the punishment handed out to both of us is identical, then law has failed. Because what I did was in the heat of the moment. And what uh, the bomber did was with careful forethought, with malice, and they have caused much greater damage to a much greater count of people. So the punishment that is handed out to them and punishment that is handed out to me cannot possibly be identical. Anyway, here we have been told that uh, they are getting the similar treatment as negligence in a traffic accident. Yeah. Bhopal has hastened the decline in the standards of judicial decisions on the environment more than any other case. Three seems like a good spot. Three seems like an insane spot because the thought of switch over, how they are getting away with causing such huge harm and destruction. Then the next idea of ascend the declining standards of judicial decisions on environment. From Union Carbide blame game, we have moved on to how environment is getting severely impacted by whatever happened. The switch over seems weird. Then, of course, 4 survives. Of course, 4 survives. The spot where it doesn't seem likely that we would have anything. The spot where it doesn't seem like we would have anything is 1. 2 also will have something because here we are talking of evading prosecution. And then we have the trial court. So, prosecution is indeed happening. Although the punishment being meted out after the trial seems very, very mild. So, the potential spot seem like 2, 3 or 4. Okay. Now let's go. The UCC and its Indian subsidiary, the Union of India and the state of Madhya Pradesh made sure that victims would not obtain compensation comparable to the damages awarded in similar mass tort actions in the United States. Ah, they evaded prosecution. Something changed that prosecution did indeed happen, trial did indeed happen. It was traffic accident. The severity of the punishment being handed out to them was something very mild. And then switch over was to environment. 
But here, the idea that is being talked of, the idea that is being talked of is the UCC, the subsidiary, the Union of India and Madhya Pradesh, how the government agencies and the corporations involved, they entered into an unholy alliance, they entered into a nexus and they tried to evade responsibility. They tried to evade responsibility. That idea was present in the first sentence. Despite Union Carbide Corporation being criminally liable for Bhopal cat catastrophe, the government, though being the sole representative of victims, colluded with UCC and compromised the interests of the affected people. And this seems like how, how they compromised the interests of the affected people. And therefore, the, the only spot that I had ruled out is the spot where the sentence will actually go. The answer to this question should be optional. Because mention of this idea, once I've mentioned collision is happening, then I go on to evading prosecution idea, then I go on to and uh, severity of punishment being handed out is very minimal. Then I go on to environment idea. Sentence is about how the government and the corporation worked hand in glove in order to evade responsibility. And that idea can only come in blank one. The answer has to be optional. Okay. Now see, this, this should also give you a highlight. Just because I have ruled out a blank, it does not mean the answer cannot be there. It would depend on what the sentence is. But reading the paragraph before reading the sentence, what it tells me is, what can I expect in the blank? It is very much like normal filling the blank skills. Let's say if I had, I have heard blank but but okay. then you have options on off on off about four around. Let's say if I'm solving this fill in the blanks, basic fill in the blanks, something that would come in. I am not reading the options first. I'm not reading the options first. I'm reading the sentence first. And then I will make a prediction about what should come in the blank. Now I will go on a hunt within the options. Is that present in the options? If it is, then great. If it is not, then I would have to go back, read the sentence again. Now I will possibly try to fit it at different places. I'm trying to replicate the same process when it comes to this. I will read through the entire thing and see if something that can be added will make sense. If we are able to do that in certain instances, like we did for the earlier questions, identifying the spot becomes easy. But in this case, even the spot that I had ruled out still remains in play because of the sentence that is given. That makes this question very, very easy. The answer for the question, I have heard dash him, but never met him. If you think the answer is about, it is not, the answer should be off. That's all. Last question for us to practice, and after that, I'll give you some homework questions, or homework questions are for you to practice. The answer key for those questions will be present in the description box. There is a sentence that is missing in the paragraph below. Look at the paragraph and decide in which blank option 1, 2, 3, or four. I read this instruction. Paragraph. The global food price spikes of 2008 should not have come as a surprise. Right? There were a number of long-term trends that were working towards the surge in food prices, which was finally occasioned by some proximate causes. Proximate causes would be something closer. Let's say when you studied uh, Second World War causes, there were all... all Always underlying causes and then the immediate cause, something that led to the start of the war. So, proximate causes are something that happened just before an incident, and then underlying causes are something that have been going on for long, which has been referenced. Now, the global food price spikes of 2008 should not have come as a surprise, and the similar idea has been continued. There are several long term trends, the several long term trends that showcased. Uh, that were working towards the surge in food prices, 
so it was an expected outcome it doesn't seem like one will one should have anything extra to make this paragraph rich then uh, i said approximate points there is a need to increase food production without raising prices to consumers okay from here to here the switch seems very weird here we were talking of surge in food prices and here we have gone on to the idea has kind of shifted the idea has shifted to without raising prices for consumers we need to increase production so there must be some shortfall in production happening in order to meet which some expenses have been incurred something along those lines that sort of idea in blank 2 would make the paragraph richer okay there is a need to increase food production without raising prices to consumers this calls for significant public support for food production yet how i'm reading the portion after portion 3 yet the poverty and much more limited fiscal capacity of developing countries as well as liberalized agricultural trade regulations over the recent decades constrain them from being more supportive of security efforts okay it doesn't seem like three should have anything here we were talking of public support of food production then we are talking of the certain challenges poverty and more fiscal limited fiscal capacity is preventing them from being more supportive of food security efforts so three does not seem likely does not seem like the likely spot where something needs to be introduced one does not seem like the likely spot two and four survive because four is right at the end it will of course survive okay while global prices have eased since then though not in india there are lessons to be drawn from the 2008 crisis okay Okay, this is absolutely wonderful. It should be two. It cannot be anything else but two, for two reasons. One, the timeline of two thousand eight crisis was mentioned here, so close to it. I should have another mention of two thousand eight. Additionally, the last line talks of there are lessons to be drawn from the two thousand eight crisis. And the next line is very prescriptive in nature here. There is a need to increase food production without raising prices to consumers. So. Lessons need to be learned, and then there is a prescriptive line right after it. Two should be the correct blank where this goes in, and that will be all for this week's solving and attempting questions. Now, questions for you to practice. I will display those questions, and I will count till five in my head. First question. Second question. Third question. Fourth question. And the final question for you to attempt. Hopefully, you paused the video or took a screenshot, however, you choose to engage with it. The answer key, the answer key alone will be present in the description description box of this video. Hopefully you learned something. That will be all for this week. See you next week with some other topic of practice. Till then.